Hey everybody, it's Rebel here. coming to you guys with an updated video about my Inkex experience I just want to go over a few things there's a few questions that were asked by me and there's a few things that I wanted to elaborate on on my previous video I did use the Saunders the tablets here that I made points I also use the La Charity I use them as a reference point next to you world I needed um, something that I could go back and forth with because even though they are good books, you world did a lot of explanations for me. Now I'm not saying it will work for you because I know people that use Saunders and got a good, they loved it. People that loved La Charity, La Charity was pretty good. I understood it, you know, the way that it made sense for me. And like I said in my response. I never left a question until I understood the rationale because sometimes it seemed like your question, your rationale came up as a question. I don't know, it was just me. It seemed like that's how it was for me. How I studied? I was studying like a month or two, but then I realized I was doing a lot of questions because you hear people say, and do what's best for you. Don't do what, don't get, don't get me wrong, do what's best for you. There were people saying, oh, I did 100, I did 75, I did 200 questions. I was doing quanti quantity over quality. So I had to sit back and say, let me do these questions and make sure I understand them before I go to the next one. Because you know something. Some things I didn't have to go over. You know something because you were in nursing school, but you don't know everything. And that's where I was at. I didn't know everything. And I was like, okay, I already failed this thing already. I don't want to do this again. And by the way, I promise you, I prayed a lot. Um, I'm not a religious person, so I'm not going to sit up here and lie to people. I am a spiritual person. I believe that there's a God. I believe that I don't get where I am by myself. So I pray a lot. So I, there's a prayer that I put in my description bar in my previous video that I prayed because it was important to me that I know that through God, nothing is possible. Like honestly, for me, with my experience, what I've been through, nothing is possible. So I prayed. There was days that I got up and I didn't want to study. There was days that I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not going to study anymore. I'm not going to take this test. I, I'm, that's it. I'm not going to be a nurse. And I was like, you know what? He didn't get me here to just leave me here. He got me here for a reason. And I'm not going to be satisfied until I'm done. So I was like, you know what? Get out of your feelings and do what you have to do for you. So that's what I did. And there was days, I promise you, that I laid in the bed. And all I could do was just say, God, please help me. And that's what I did. Because... I went through Kaplan and I'm not going to dog Kaplan out. I'm not going to dog nobody out. I'm just going to tell you my experience because everybody's experience is different. I felt like they were for who they wanted to be there for. And if you had a different experience, good for you. For me, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad experience. It was, I drove far to get there and I'll give you a little story. Like our instructor was emailing us and said, well, the DOA, assistant DOA was the email and she was like, oh, your IP is ready. You know, you're ready. They were doing study session where people that were close, but I wasn't close. But at the same time, I don't know what she did. I guess she looked me up and then she was like, oh, Mark, did you um take your index already? Because I guess my, I had mailed back my IP card. And I was like, yeah, because at the time when I took my test, like I said, my first I was going through a lot. I was really going through a lot. And I didn't never heard from her again. Long as, once she felt, I don't know if it was, and it might be in my head, didn't hear from her again. But aside from that, I hated study Kaplan's way. To me, Kaplan is not for everybody. And if it worked for you, kudos to you. It wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. I didn't get it. It was too much, too much information with little explanation. I didn't get it. So I didn't like it. So I went another road. I sat down and I said, you know what? I can do this. I have the same 24 hours as everybody else. I can do this. So let me pick myself up off the floor and do this. Because when I did it, I wasn't ready. And I knew I wasn't ready. And I shouldn't have taken the test. And follow your feelings. I don't care what nobody tell you or what your friend is doing or what your classmate or anybody is doing. Follow your feelings. If you're not ready, don't take the test. I had scheduled a test for the 25th of July. 
And before the desk came around, I was like, I'm not ready. I scheduled it two, two weeks later and I took it two weeks later. And I went into that test day telling myself, I'm going to walk out of here an hour in today. I didn't have no doubt in myself because that's the next thing. Don't doubt yourself because you know, you know you and you know what you're capable of doing. Nobody knows you like you. You know. And even when the test, the questions were coming and I was like, what the hell is this? And I sat in front of the computer, in front of the computer, and I said, not today. And I started feeling myself, doubting myself. I said, not today, devil. Not today. I'm passing this test. So I told myself everything I did before, I wasn't going to do the second time. I was going to take a break if I had to or whatever. My first break came along, and I said, mm, I'm going to take a break. And I was like, let me wait. When I got to 100 questions, I said, okay, I'm going to take a break. I took a break. I went to the bathroom. And I prayed, I wiped my face and I prayed, I said, God, if you don't want me to pass this test today, let me know so I can leave. Don't let me go through all of this for nothing. And then I said, you know what? No, I'm going to pass this test. And I went back in there and I sat down and I got myself together and my thought and I said, let's do this. I kept answering questions and the screen went blue and I was like, mm, what is this now? Okay, I'm going to just wait. And a survey came out and I was like, oh shit, it's over? It's really over? I did not feel like I failed. I didn't feel defeated. I just, I felt like, like that's how I went in, normal. And a lady was taking her test. She was taking an LVN test and she looked at me, she shook her head. And she was like, Are you done? I said, Yeah, because I went to the bathroom before I got my phone and stuff out of the um safety thing that you put in the storage. And she said, Are you done? I said, Yes. And she just shook her head like this. So I was like, Nope, I'm not claiming that. I'm not claiming that. Got my phone, I went downstairs, I called my husband, I said, Where are you at? And he was like, I mean, right where you left me. And he said, how is it? I said, I don't know. I went down waited for my skill at kids at their school. And I did the little piercing trick <clears throat> in my phone. I think I have it. And when I did the trick, I saw the good, the good pop-up. And I was like, mm-mm. Somebody's playing with me today. When I did my um phone, pop up and I was like mm, it said you couldn't register and I was like no no it can't be it no something is playing with me and I was like mm, I didn't say nothing to him and I tried again because he's sitting there with me and we're waiting for the kids and I tried again and I came up with the same thing I put my card information in and I put submit and it said you can't register because you already had a test on this date and I was like is this for real is this for real? But I was like, I'm not going to trust this until I did it all through the evening when we got home. Because we, like I said, my kids go to school. So they're like an hour to hour and a half, maybe or 15 minutes away from more. Really. Did it when I got home. I did it a couple hours later. Did it before I went to bed. I did it in the morning. I did it again at 24 hours after I test. Because they were like, okay, they check it twice. So if after 24 hours you pass, I checked it again. <clears throat> and I was like, oh my goodness. And that was a Wednesday I took the test. So the next day I checked was a Thursday. On the Friday, I said, let me go on the board's website. And I saw my name and I called my husband. I said, look here. And I saw my name, Aaron. And I said, oh, God, this shit is over. Thank God this shit is over. So don't doubt yourself. I know the only person that can know what you're going through is somebody that's been through it. So if you fail the NCLEX, trust and believe me, I know exactly what you're going through. I know without doubt that hurt, the like sacrifice that you felt like you've done everything. But sometimes God puts you on a setback for a greater comeback. Because I know there's something greater in store for me. Trust me, I know there's something greater in store for me. So going back to what I was saying, I didn't focus on the score. I focused on me. I put all my focus on me and me. I'm like, so I had a review with a, um, with a, they say they do, um, review. And we went through some questions. And she had me read the questions and I answered the question and she said, you're not connected to the question. I said, huh? She's like, you're disconnected from the question. And I'm like, what? And she's like, you are reading and just answering. You're not thinking about the question. So she said, think about the question. Think about what the question is asking you. Then ask yourself, if I do this for the patient or if I don't do nothing for the patient, what is going to happen? So when I went to Inclix, I asked myself when I had a question, if I don't do nothing, what's going to happen? Or if I do something, what's going to happen? Because they're only going to give, they're going to give you stuff to do or not to do. Or you're going to tell yourself, if I don't do nothing for this patient, what is going to happen? So you look at the scenario. What if I don't do nothing? This is going to happen, right? So if I must have to do something, 
or let me put it this way what the answer is giving you if the answer gives you something that you do something it's going to help the patient or hurt the patient if it's going to hurt them you're not going to pick that one but if it's something that's going to help the patient you're going to pick that one and I, I guess that's what i'm trying to explain in a lot of words verbiage so when you see people tell us people get on youtube and they say oh i know the big thing was oh the 36 page of inkflex notes i have those if anybody want them let me know they didn't do anything for me they didn't do anything for me i studied kawasaki disease slash um a aka the slap face disease you know all that stuff i went through that page the most that i did was i did go over the labs I didn't have a lot of math questions because math also felt like IV questions and stuff. I didn't have a lot of calculation questions, I should say. I had maybe two. My first question was a calculation question, as a matter of fact. Stuff like, <clears throat> you know, I was like, whoa, <laughs> why well, we got to start at math? Because when I was reviewing, I didn't go over math because math was my strongest point. The first time I took the test, I passed math with flying colors. So I was like, wow, here we go. And I did my stuff. I had questions that I was looking at like, what the hell? And I promise you, um, a lot of questions I don't remember. Um, some of them were simple, basic recall questions. I'm assuming. But you know, it's the basic stuff that you would know, like positioning and stuff. But for the most part, what I do know is that I went into that test believing in me. Praying and believing in me and I prayed the 23rd Psalm and I just walked in saying that not today I'm gonna do this because I've gone through all this and it can't be for nothing and I know in some of my comment I say pray pray Right, like I said, I uploaded a couple of prayers that I use but I believe prayer move mountains I believe faith move mountain but prayer also helps It makes you feel and I know when they probably look at my video there's times I put my hands and I was praying because that's all I needed to get me through it. And no, I didn't go crazy. I didn't do the, all the questions. I didn't pass up no crazy number. I don't even know why I shut off. I know I went over a hundred. I said, if I had to do it again, I would have did you were. I think it's very, very, it's good with the explanation. The rationales are so on point. They go further than your book. So that's why I liked it. Um, what else can I tell you guys? And people pay all this money. People pay all this money for review. And nobody know what questions you're going to get. All they know is that you need to know certain subjects, which is true. Safety. This is what, um, if you guys work in a hospital, these are, I hope you can see it. It's enhanced contact precautions. You know these are going to show up, right? You know these are going to show up, right? Safety, precautions, they never fail. Um, I got these from somebody that works in a hospital. I got the gloves and stuff at home that I practice. Um, you know these are gonna show up. Safety questions, gloves, um, measles, know your measles, no, um, no my bad. Let me say it the right way. Know your airborne precautions. Know your droplets. Know them. Um, for the most part, I think if you fail safety, you fail the test. If you fail safety, you fail the test. I did a lot of safety questions on UWorld. I did a lot of leadership questions on UWorld, and maybe that's what got me through. I went through Saunders for my fundamentals for procedures, for procedures, for procedures. <laughs> um, and you know, don't worry about scores. I will, I, will, I will say that every time. If you ask me, I will tell you, don't worry about scores. Scores will make you feel like a failure. Don't look at the goddamn scores, sorry. It will make you feel like a failure because if you know, you know something, you don't know everything. You don't know everything. You know something. I went through diets. There was stuff I went through that I didn't even get tested on, okay? But that doesn't mean you're not gonna get tested on it. I'm just saying. You world was true. I know somebody was saying she took, when she did you world, 
when she walked in that test, there was no question she didn't understand. And I promise you, you or Lance Sanders are like sisters and brothers. They could be twins for all I know. But I'm saying that you will just go break it down more, 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 more. Do your best. Take your time. Take your time with the questions. Don't rush through them. Don't sit there and say, oh, you know what? The more questions I do, oh, my friend did so much question. No, do your best. Do what you can do. Because like I said, I'm not going to say that some people will sit up here and swear that Kaplan was, mm, it wasn't for me. Kaplan was not for me. I have a, a classmate that I think he still hasn't tested yet. And the sad part about that is that, and by the way, let me put this up in here. Uh, if you are a student in school, sweet honey child, you will do fine. Because once you had a pattern of studying, you will carry it forward. And don't think you'll find any questions that you studied in these damn books. You know when you do the question books and you do questions and you go on, buy these CDs and they give you questions? You won't see them on there, honey. You won't see them. It's all about what you would do as a first or a new nurse. If you had this scenario, what would you do as a new nurse? That's what it's about. What would you do? And if you know what you wouldn't do, and you break it down to two questions, like I was good at, then with the two questions that you have, you ask yourself which one of these is going to either help or hurt the patient. That's all. And you sit on and you ask yourself, what is this question asking me? And do not, I repeat, do not rush through inklix. I didn't take a long time because I, I, um, didn't know the questions. I knew answers and I would sit there with the answer. And I was like, I know this, but because I knew what I went through the first time, I'm gonna take my time and make sure I didn't, there wasn't a trick question. And yes, you look out for the ands and the always and the never and the absolute. You look for those, they're in there. Look for them, knock them out. Prior to questions, you know the why. You never ask, uh, you, if the question has a why in it, you know it's wrong. Automatically, you know it's wrong. There's a why somewhere there. You're like, mm, this is wrong. This will not do. But yes, um, again, I'll reiterate. Don't worry about scores. Stop it. Stop it. Don't let people tell you that scores are important. It's not. Don't worry about who is doing what or who passed or who didn't pass. Do you at your own pace because it will hurt you more if you take it fast and you fail than if you take your time and study.